I don't know if you can see that haze. You can hardly see the mountains. That is from a wildfire that's burning in Mexico, a little bit south of Agua Prieta. And the wind is so strong, it's blown that over here. Be careful, people. It's wildfire season. Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to Copperline Rattler Ranch. I'm Julia. It's a little bit late getting this video out. Um, we've been super busy working on these floors in the house. And as I will explain to you in the video, uh, we've decided to go with a wet pour instead of that dry pour. Uh, a number of reasons, mainly something we didn't think about before we started, was that our humidity here, our relative humidity, our air humidity is so incredibly low that we really think that was the worst part of this dry pour situation. Uh, it just, we just have such, such, I mean, 10%, 15%, one day it was 8%. So uh, yeah, super, super dry. We couldn't get it wet enough. We did each of the three dry pours a little bit differently. The last one, I just soaked it and soaked it and soaked it. And we still have a little bit of trouble, not a whole lot, but a little bit of trouble with the surface kind of crumbling away. So we decided to go with wet pour. We're almost done. We've been working really hard on it um, this week. So we're almost done with it. And once we're done with that, we'll move on to some more exciting things. And like I'll tell you in the video, it doesn't mean dry pour is a bad idea. It's a, I think it's a great idea for a lot of places in the country, but maybe just not for us. Also, something interesting happened. We got a message that this couple, um, Mike and Terry of MT Homestead, were going to feature us on one of their live shows. They do a live show every Sunday uh, at 2 o'clock Central. So if you want to check them out, go to that or just go to MT Homestead. I'll put, put their name right here um, and check them out. As a result of that, we got about 20, 28 new subscribers in just that one incident. So thank you so much. We can't thank you enough. That was really sweet. Um, you know, we went ahead and subscribed to your channel. And we'll probably check out some of those people who were uh, in the little reader thing. Um, you know, the comment section, leaving comments about their pages as well. So a lot of people get a lot of good exposure by good people doing this for their channels. Um, and again, thank you so much, Mike and Terry. That was very thoughtful, very lovely. And you couldn't have uh, done a better job at explaining who we are, what we're doing, that kind of thing, and inviting people over to at least take a look. So that uh, we're very, very happy for. And thank you so much. We also want to welcome all of our new subscribers, all those people who've been around for a long time from the beginning. All the ones that were uh, joining, you know, little speckles here and there. Thank you for joining us. We hope to keep you entertained in our build. Um, and like I said, any questions or comments, put in that comment section below the video. Uh, I had no idea how controversial dry pour versus wet pour concrete would be. Most of our comments on that video were were great. Most of them were very helpful, had suggestions, recommendations, things that they tried and 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 uh, worked and things that they tried and didn't work. We are not out to debunk dry pour. We are not out to debunk wet pour. We were trying a different method and I think it's only a natural process to try something new on occasion. Uh, to try something that might actually work for you. We were hopeful that it would work well for us. We did three slabs, small slabs, um, two that were eight by five and, oh, actually, nope, and one that was eight by three. We had problems with all three. The first two, uh, we didn't do a vapor barrier. The third one, we did do a vapor barrier. We still had trouble with it. You'll see some comments later in the video on that. So we have decided to go along and do wet pour for the rest of it. And like I said, this is not to say dry pour doesn't have its place. We're just not concrete people. We've been successful 
moderately to a lot of the things that we've done on this build. Concrete just seems to, to baffle us for some reason. So we have taken to heart a lot of the suggestions and recommendations on the dry pour that people have uh, put in the comment section. We've watched some people's videos. We watched DIY the Grappler. He has some really good videos, so watch him. Um, so uh, yeah, we just couldn't get it for some reason. And it actually was taking us longer, we felt, than doing a wet pour. So we've decided we're going to go ahead and go with wet pour for the rest of this floor. Now we do know that we have a lot of cold edges. Let me show you what that is. So if you're unfamiliar, a cold edge is like where these two slabs meet. This is a dry pour, this is a wet pour, wet pour, wet pour. So all these edges are considered cold edges and they're at risk for being weak points. Even though we have a lot of cold edges, we're not worried about that. All this floor is doing is being a floor. It's not supporting the walls in any way. It's not supporting our internal wood frame walls in any way. That was a totally separate uh, pour that we did months and months and months ago. So uh, go back and look if you want to in the old videos. Um, so it's only going to be supporting human weight, maybe our puppy dogs once in a while, and our furniture. So we're not putting any rebar in. We're not putting any uh, anything like that in there. We're not worried about the cold edges. And we are likely to do some sort of finish. We're talking about uh, doing either a um, leveling compound or making repairs on any of those spaces that we feel need to have some repair work uh, where the top has just kind of flaked away and then maybe painting uh, doing some concrete or masonry paint on top and perhaps having it colored you know like you can do the paint for your wall you can get it different colors so we haven't fully decided yet if that's what we're going to do we want to do what's going to be quick, easy, but still have some uh, beauty to it. This is the completed bedroom, um, the one dry pour, and you can see more of the surface kind of crumbled away versus all of our other wet pours. Now we know that these cold edges need some work, so our plan is to get a burnisher or concrete floor grinder kind of thing and smooth those areas out before we decide what we're going to do for the final um, part of this floor. We're still tossing around the idea of using leveling compound and perhaps painting it or if we're satisfied with the way it looks um, either way we need to use area rugs things like that we just may paint it seal it and put some rugs so we have one more portion to do and that's in the living room we're going to be doing that this afternoon and that's this little section right here we have to wait to pull these frames off because we just did this one yesterday um, pull these frames off in a few hours and then we'll uh, make sure that we have an appropriate amount of gravel in that area, tamp it, put our moisture barrier there, our, our vapor barrier there, and then do the pour and get everything leveled off and this whole floor will finally, finally be done. I believe that's going to be it for this week's video. We hope you enjoyed it. Remember to like, share, and subscribe. Any questions, comments below the video. We'll see you next time. Bye. We're at the Lavender Pit in Bisbee. This is one of the memorials that is there for the World War II veterans.
I can do it like just like this. Get the choya. The choya. It's blooming. The choya. It's blooming. The blooming choya. I can get it right here. Some people think it's called lavender pit because of the color. I know. It's the actual person's name. It is. This is how you lose your camera.